All right, safe. Welcome everyone to another dev log. That's right. It's Dankenstein here, and we're working on our pirate game. And well, pirates versus ninjas. I've just made myself a little uh, ninja star shuriken type situation. So we're in the middle of working on the, on Ninja Three. Ninja Three isn't going to move, but he is going to throw uh, shuriken at you. Is the plan? So I'll show you what we've got so far here. Um, it's a little test level, but it, obviously we, we covered the character movement last time. I've I've updated the uh, blunderbuss animation, which I think looks much much better now. It's still not amazing, but it's much better. But the the blunderbuss doesn't deal damage yet, but we can just blast them. But the sword does. So you know we can hit that guy, or if he comes near us, he punches us a bit of knockback. If we get hit by the cartwheeling guy, a lot more knockback. Yeah, but the cartwheeling guy is yeah. You know we just hit him. When we hit him, he turns turns back on himself and then we've got little bloody death animation there um, and and our health is working too so yeah this like those two enemies are finished and we just have to basically write finish kind of building this this third one here I still I need to add in his animations and stuff I've gone for an animated sprite with this guy rather than a sprite with an animation player like I did with number one we've got the animation player in the animation tree it's quite simple, but I, I think we can. We don't need that for this guy. So yeah, at the moment, you see no script attached to Ninja 3, uh, no script attached to the Shuriken. So I'm going to try and do this now as part of the devlog. We're going to see if we can just get it all done uh, straight away. So I'll try and talk you through the process as I achieve bits and bobs. Um, so I guess the first thing is to add a script to this guy. And um, yeah, let's get cracking. All right, but actually, before we get into scripting, this Ninja 3 needs some more elements added. So we'll add in our hitbox, and we'll add in our hurtbox. Not as a child of the hitbox, though. Just as, yep, that's better. And then the stats as well. Um, so this is all good. We want to connect uh, no health from the stats into the script. We want to also connect uh, taking damage from our stats script in here. So the stat script is being used by the player and all the enemies. I just have this kind of hacky thing here where it says if get parent name is player then this is all the stuff that surrounds the player's health. Otherwise the, the stats script is the same for them all. It just manages um, their max health, their damage and um, shout outs Heart Beast and the tutorials um, that I used last time. I kind of lifted some of this stuff from those again, the, the, the health management stuff. Actually, now I'm reconsidering. Maybe he doesn't have a, hit, a hitbox. His hitbox comes from the shuriken that he throws. So yeah, we'll just we'll just delete that. No hitbox for him. Okay, so I've now just added uh, attacking there and else idle. So now it should just be like idle, 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 idle at the bottom there, and then we can see attacking, 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 idle, idle, idle. So now we can actually kind of get a feel for what distance we want. So I would just say we go straight in with 160 pixels, which is half a screen's width. Only problem is then he can attack us off screen if he's above or below us. Okay, so maybe it should be 90 then. So it's like half the screen's height. Okay, so now we can just replace it with the animations. So play, and then you just put the name of the animation in the string. So this should be super easy. I've put, created a reference, the animated sprite here. So it should just be, Sprite dot play uh, throw else idle. He's idle. He's chilling. Okay, he's got a very very small. Actually, that's quite good. The low frame rate is quite nice on him. And then he starts throwing. But that yeah, the throwing frame rate needs to be higher. So you come in here. Yeah, I don't mind the idle being that slow, but this should be up at 15, I think, is what I was using for the other guy who... Oh, that's going to be... that's He's going to be throwing them quite quite regularly. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll try 10. So last thing then, just as we do with the death effects here, we want a, um, a constant for the shuriken, which we're going to preload in that uh, scene here oh we need some brackets okay so now that scene is like ready to be loaded in we should be able to do it in the same way with this get parent add child vibe 
when we get near him then we should just see they just start to appear perfect um, so it would be good if there was a bit of an offset there say so the globe position uh, minus equals 8 I think is that going to be we're going to look below him yeah perfect so now they're coming out of the middle that's great so a bit of a timer on there I suppose so he's not just like throwing them every single physics frame <laughs> would be good okay I've just had an idea we can just use the frame of the animation I think let's let's have him throw it every time he is at frame two all right we did it and it's pretty hacky um i i mean this is the thing i've learned probably above all is how many different ways there are to skin a cat you kind of think it's a weird phrase that isn't it but you kind of think or i always assumed with programming that like there's a right answer for everything but there isn't there's just loads of options <laughs> Um, and different ways to do it, different ways to skin a cat. So all I did was I added a variable called throwing, which starts off as false. And in order to throw something, it has to be frame two and throwing has to be false. And if that's the case, then it immediately sets throwing to true, ensuring that this if statement only, only ever is true once uh, in each, each time we visit frame two. Throwing is true, and then it does all this stuff. And then it, we just have a little test that says, look, if you're at frame one, and throwing is true then set it back to false so that you're ready to hit frame two again and it works so if we look down here as like when i get into range test 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 so that's the frequency at which those stars are going to be thrown at the moment we can change all those values of course um and this is all now linked perfectly to the to the frames within the animation so if you want him to throw slower we just make the animation of the throwing slower and the, yeah so that's that is quite an elegant elegant solution even though I'm not sure using a variable like this oh, maybe it's okay as a little on off switch I suppose it's fine I suppose it's actually quite uh, quite efficient and the other thing I just added here is this just a test to see if the players on the left hand side of the of the enemy so that if, if so then the enemy turns around so I'll just show you that quickly it's very simple but it works um, we jump over his head there you go he turns to face us now um, so all we need to do now is make the shuriken actually move towards the player when they are, you know, when they're on ready. I suppose, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a ready function, isn't it? As soon as as soon as they are created in the world, they're going to do their thing. Um, and I'm going to try and add a little bit of randomness to the the way they pick their direction. But anyway, let's let's do that now. All right, well it works, guys. Although they're not dealing damage to me, I thought I'd set everything up, so I need to deal with that. And obviously they're way too slow. But you can see the way they match the animation, it looks great actually. I mean, it's obviously very simple, but, but I think it looks cool. So we should be able to fit easily. Yeah, we can just say, look, way more speed, like 200 speed at least. Okay, that, that's too fast, but they're getting there, getting there. 150. Okay, that feels dangerous. That feels hard, um, but I quite like. I quite like it. Um, so here's the code. We have sprite rotation degrees plus equals ten, so that gets them rotating, which looks fine to me. I think we'll bring them down to maybe 120 in speed. Um, move and collide, velocity, delta, and speed, and then the friction gets applied as it moves towards zero in speed, which I think works fine. Now accuracy is something I wanted to add in to just randomize the direction ever so slightly. I might leave that for now, or rather than leave it actually, it belongs in here. Because this we're setting the velocity once here when as it as it's created, so that then the physics process of the thing itself isn't adjusting its velocity. Or it's sorry it's like it's targeting basically it targets once at the point it's created and then it moves in a straight line from there so it would be in here that we'd want to say direction to player and then like you know adding a random number to the x and y coordinates or adding and subtracting a little bit of randomness to them all right so i've added some randomness in but it's kind of interesting because i'm not just changing the angle it's pointing at so it needs to be the vector needs to be normalized again but you can see the randomness is working, but yeah, it's just affecting the speed. Yeah, cool, that's working, we did it. Oh wait, this guy's gonna kill me. <laughs> um, so if we stand here, you can see the speed is now constant that they're being thrown at, 
but the direction is slightly randomized around the player. Seems to be slightly biased towards going above me. That might just be something to do with how I've done the maths, but I think it's fine. It adds that randomness that I wanted. We don't need to be really precise about it. But we can stand in one spot now and have a few different things. Now we just need to work out why we're not getting damage from it, and then they're all finished. Oh, and I suppose not that my code is any good, but I should show you how I did this. I just created inside this where every time it's it's like, okay, yeah, we're about to throw something. We define this like random X and random Y value, which is just based on this accuracy uh, constant I've set up here. And what we're doing is taking a random number modulo that, so it's always going to be a number between 0 and 50. And then we're, we're minusing ha like half of that off of it. So what that basically means is there's a good there's a chance we get a minus number now. We're not just getting a random number between 0 and 50, we're getting a random number between minus 25 and 25. And then um, we take that number and we times it by 0 0.01 to make it nice and small so it can just affect the vector there and then we normalize it. So the vector kind of gets distorted a bit by the random numbers um, and, then, and then normalized back to full strength. And that seems to work. So that's cool. Now, why is the player not taking damage from them? I set up the shuriken here. So I would have thought that would be fine. Oh right, I know why. Look, I put if area name is shuriken, but the area is actually the hitbox. So we want to rename the shuriken's hitbox to shuriken hitbox from just generic hitbox. And then change this to that. I think we're finished now. I think this is all the enemies set up and ready to go. And it's just level design left. Yep, we took knockback and damage. Uh, I think that concludes it for today's devlog. We've got our three enemies all working perfectly well. We can fight them. <laughs> that guy's pretty funny. We just... We don't want to let Shuriken Man kill us, because if, if, if Shuriken Man's alive when we die, then the game crashes. Like that. <laughs> but anyway, look, that's that. Thanks for watching. I think I'm just going to work on level design for the next couple of days and release a nice little platform game because everything else is just very simple details. Add a bit of audio, um, maybe some health pickups, but like the hard stuff is all, is all done. So yeah, thanks for watching. A bit of a longer one today, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon for some more. All right, peace.